Over to Aaron. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm Aaron Brown. Um, the Optase project is very much focused on the CAP environment. So looking at the CAP or the impact of housing and management on the environment and then the, how the environment affects CAP health and uh, performance. Um, so the first step of that was to do a survey of, of CAP housing in Northern Ireland. So we got to 66 uh, farms, sorry. Um, and they were visited the three times in the period from January or the end of January to the start of May 2019. And um, just a brief window at the in that time. Um, this was in partnership with the CAFRI uh, Dairy Advisory Team uh, and well, 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 hi, with the Dairy Advisory Team um, and there was three visits. The first visit being a survey which was to look at the practice of, of CAFRI and on that farm and to, to assess the conditions and the measurements of, of the house. Um, and the second and third visits were, were two weeks apart and were, uh, this is for those who haven't got involved obviously some of you know all this, um, the second and third visits were sampling visits to take samples for bacteria, uh, microbiological analysis mm -hmm and to weigh calves and take health scores and the likes. And two loggers were left in the calf house over the two week period. Um, so rough uh, so rough um, summary, uh, 66 farms all over Northern Ireland. Um, the average herd size was 142, that varied from uh, 66 cows to or 400 cows. And the average herd lactation was 8,000 litres, which varied from um, 5,500 to 11,000. So a big mixture in sort of the performance or the production uh, types. Uh, to begin, to begin with sort of a rough idea of sort of what way the, the herd management is, it will have an impact on, on the calving. Um, as you can see there, a big variation in the number of calves the farms are keeping uh, from birth to weaning. So <coughs> a big difference of from 250 cows or calves uh, down to 16 and the average being 70. So the number of calves come into that period and then looking as well at the, uh, the calving spread across the year. So you could uh, herds there calving all year round. So that's maybe 120 calves coming three, six, five days of the year and um, balanced across that. Whereas you may have heard in the spring and the 6% of the spring block calvers um, where you've got the same number of calves coming over a, a two month, three month period, which places a big difference in the demand of the, on the calf house in terms of uh, bacteria coming from um, from the calves in terms of hygiene. Um, as well as that sort of the labor that's available on the farm. So 58% of the farms had one individual uh, uh, responsible for the calf rear and other farms had many more than that. Uh, so, uh, so the uh, calving, the calving pen, so Jamie's touched on some of this stuff already. Uh, so 72% uh, of the farms uh, were calving in single calving pens, um, whereas 23% were calving in communal. So difference in terms of what uh, bacteria is going to be in, in that pen from one cow or multiple cows, uh, as well as the difference that's caused by the frequency of cleans. Um, 27% uh, of, of the farms said that they had a clean calving pen for each calf, um, for each calving, and 73% uh, saying not so. So you've got a calf coming out of a from from out of the womb, coming into an environment that's dirty, it's cold, um, and it's under it's probably hungry as well. It's hungry as well. So it's a lot of physiological stress placed on the calf. Um, as well as that, 26% uh, of the farms said that the sick cows were in the calving pens. So you're skeptical about that, I suppose there's uh, it's, it's the easiest place to, place to put a, 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 a sick cow. Um, but 74% said that they, they did not do that. So again, not only um, is this calf coming into a dirty environment, it's could be very much an infected environment, a few sick, ca or sick cows coming in and out of the, the calving pens. Um, uh, On to the single calf uh, pen management. So calf pens, or single calf pens, uh, almost certainly the first place the calf goes if you're if using a like single calf or single pens uh, then onto group pens the single pen is the place where the calf goes first it's the younger younger more um, immuno, immuno naive calves going into this pen and um, the majority uh, came out every three three weeks every four to six weeks and every um three to ten weeks so there's a long, large variation as you can see across the farms in terms of how how often they're being cleaned out which have a big impact on the hygiene um, and then added to this, if we're going to the next one, or the next one about how they're cleaning them out. So uh, the first column here, they've got, uh, the farms are cleaning out, cleaning out the pens, washing the pens and disinfecting. And the next column over, just cleaning them out and washing them, uh, and then cleaning out and just disinfecting. And the final one, where they're cleaning them out only. Um, so the lack of the of actually washing out organic material, organic material, um, as Jimmy talked about, is not not actually cleaning out the, the bacteria where the problems arise. Um, and there's another thought just that from the farms where they're cleaning up, cleaning out and disinfecting, but not necessarily washing. If you if you have a calf pen, as we uh, say, not being cleaned out every, every once or twice a year, and you're cleaning it out, 
the back it's going to be a very hard for you to, to wash out all the organic material before you disinfect it so it's it's another way that uh, bacteria is allowed to to lay dormant or not lay dormant but to, to stay there across uh, cleans and, and the hygiene uh, deteriorates <coughs> continually uh, although 78 percent of farms said that are based on this had a, a clean a calf going into a clean single calf pen which is very much uh, very important for this age group um looking at group pens then um yeah again a large variation some only being cleaned out once or twice a year um and every close to uh, two and a half three months big variation in the most uh, popular or most common every four to six weeks um over 40 percent uh 76 percent of the farms uh said the calves were going into a clean uh, group pen of those that used disinfectant um which was about 53 uh 70 73 percent of those said that they measured the concentration so i think we're talking earlier about uh, not, not having the correct concentrations if it's below what the recommendation is that it's not working as effectively and again how they're actually doing that so again a very large variation how these pens are being cleaned out is organic material being removed is uh, is the cleaning being successful um going on then as well sort of what the age of grouping um varied across the farm so if these cows here are being grouped from birth going into a group pen that's hasn't only been cleaned once or twice a year um that's a that's a lot that's a lot of bacteria for a young calf with a very naive immune system to take on um and milk cream equipment i'll keep moving quickly um so the, the top uh, table there shows sort of the different ways that of milk's being fed so uh 21 using automatic feeders uh 52 percent using single teat buckets 29 percent using uh multi teat feeders and 38 buckets and 17 using chocks um the from there at yeah so again once again a very um very large variation in the way that uh, these um that they're being cleaned and how often they're being cleaned as you'll see in a minute um most 37 percent uh cleaning out after every feed um 17 percent no not 12 percent uh, cleaning out uh daily um and then looking yes yeah, so there's quite a yeah, lot that not uh, routinely cleaning then looking at um how, what they're using to clean them a uh, large variation so we try to middle sorry with the cold water and hot water type of chemicals sometimes so that's sort of a, a weekly basis um whether they're using hot water or chemical and then every after every feed they're using cold water um not cleaning the, the milk, uh, milk cleaning equipment um so the milk, milk's going directly into the stomach of the calf where a lot of your scars are originating from um having dirty milk going into your calf sort of a high risk it's a very it's a, it's a, it's a very dangerous in terms of, to the calf um and therefore yeah and um, the thought is that uh whatever sorry <laughs> i'm just I'm struggling to collect my thoughts here um yeah my thought was uh, that if you're not cleaning the calf the calf equipment every feed and you're letting it stay for say um three or four days or more uh i know for a fact i live in a student house and if if uh if the, if the dishes are left overnight or a couple of days you can't clean them with cold water the stuff's not going to get cleaned um, and therefore it's very important that they're being cleaned regularly and being cleaned properly um in terms of uh, uh designated cleaning and drying areas 35 percent uh you have a designated cleaning area um 23 percent have them in the drying area this this uh, is sort of a nice, a nice idea of a calf kitchen access to hot and cold water for proper cleaning um, and then the drying areas you can see so allowing the allowing the, the uh, equipment to be cleaned in an area uh, that's away from the calves not contaminated by that um to clean between feeds water uh, drinkers and buckets so the hygiene um from from the water uh in the water we um first uh uh, uh, right to, to there is the conductivity and um, so conductivity is measured across several drinkers within the calf house um large variation seen there within that most of that was seen within the recommendations of 1500 and um, which is quite interesting conductivity is a measure of uh, the ability of sort of electricity to pass through the water so that's the presence of uh, insoluble ions and um, access hygiene and cleanability were all measured uh, 
with a scoring system. So it's a one to four um, sort of a way of, uh, of, of measure, measuring that visually. Uh, one being the best, four being the worst. Um, and an average of access was one at one point seven. So access looking at sort of how many animals can drink at one time and the height of the drinker. Um, hygiene being uh, sort of the, the level of contamination visually in the water, and then cleanability being uh, where where is that that uh, water truck? Is it the back of the pen? Is it hard to see? Is it easy to clean? Um, does it have a plug? Um, and then hygiene analysis, which a lot was a lot of interest in, I suppose, um, which were very high. Uh, there is no such um, uh, specification for, for what hygiene should be in terms of TVCs, coliforms, and E. coli in, um, in calves or in cattle. It's, it's, we're working here from the red tractor pig standards. Um, and from the samples that we took, uh, none of the samples were within the, the level for, within the recommended level for TVC at 22 degrees. None of our 3% were within this, the recommendations for TVC at 37 degrees. And what does that mean? 37 degrees TBC is sort of the presence of bacteria that can thrive at body temperature, 37 degrees, as opposed to 22 degrees, which is room temperature. Um, coliforms being bacteria present in this are coming from the soil and possibly from the, from the gut, so uh, fecal, and E. coli being very much fecal coliforms. So 23% were within the recommended levels. Um, and I, this is, uh, if, we, if you receive the report, you've seen this, and um, we sit with these graphs. And um, this being the recommended level here, and uh, this being the sentence within it. So yeah, but large variation, very high, very dirty water. Um, and that was seen ac across uh, the TVCs, uh, which is total valuable count, and the coliforms and the E. coli. Um, yeah. So then looking at the calf house design, which was the other aspect of this. Um, the calf house uh, design was cl classified into several different uh, types. Yeah, the purpose-built calf houses, so there's 33%, which is sort of a, a calf house, which is a standalone calf house purely for, for calf rearing. Um, a hutch system, as you know, uh, multifunctional sheds where, where there's uh, storage of, of equipment and on bedding, for example. Fire systems where, where, where it's a block wall up to a roof and a shared uh, cow shed where the cows are sharing up, uh, airspace with cows. Um, again, we were using visual scores um, to, as an assessment of how easy those would be to clean. So one being the best and four being the worst um, and the average across the farms was 24 24 percent of those uh, farms had an average of over over 2.5 which is sort of the, the lesser half um, and so it's harder to clean uh, harder to keep the hygiene levels uh, higher and lower bacteria levels drainage uh, drainage the way the drainage was assessed was one being the best drainage so a good a contact or intact surfaces that allowed water to run and and uh, presence of channels um, and per per drainage being cracked surfaces where water can, can and as well as water pooling um 18 percent of the calf houses had an average drainage score that was over 2.5 so again that lesser half and in terms of ventilation 90 percent of the farms uh, were using natural ventilation as you might expect uh, 52 percent we're sharing airspace with, with older animals. Um, so there's that risk of, of bacteria, airborne bacteria coming from more um, immunocompetent animals. 53% of the houses were joined other buildings. So that's potentially a, a compromising air, natural airflow as well as fresh as fresh air coming into that uh, calf house and potentially contaminated air uh, from other cattle. Uh, in terms of relative humidity, which was measured with the loggers inside the house, um, uh, you want the relative humidity to be below 80 or 80 percent um, which is obviously not really not easily possible in, in the uk considering the the natural uh, the humidity outside and um, an average of uh, the the average average sorry i'm not that average 64 percent of the time uh, across all the farms so that's an average between from one farm to another and um, was above 80 percent so quite, quite a lot of the time uh, over half in terms of the, the dampness of the concrete um inside the pen and outside the pen uh, five five percent of the farms um had more than fifty percent of damp concrete inside the pen, whereas uh, outside the pen, thirteen percent of the farms had over fifty percent uh, dampness. Um, a lot of percentages in that. Uh, twenty twenty percent of the of the the farms had uh, over had between twenty five and fifty percent as as opposed to nine percent, which were outside the, the dampness was outside the pen. Um, 
Okay. Talking then about uh, the outlet, so we, we measured the, all the dimensions of the ventilation, uh, including the cladding as well as the outlet. Um, in terms of the outlet area, um, which is sort of uh, calculated uh, by the number of animals in the shed, the pitch of the roof, the, the height of the building, um, and, and the area per animal. Um, what what the, the percentage that the farms had of what they should have had uh, is displayed in this table. Um, 15% of the farms had over 200% of what they needed. So this is sort of a, a very large overkill of an outlet. As you, it's sort of the idea of being seen on the, on the picture, they're very wide. In that particular farm, the outlet in that calf building was bigger than what his outlet and was far bigger than the outlet on his cow building when there was um, a lot more cows. So, so it's sort of 40% roughly of what, uh, you need 40% of the area uh, for calves than you would for cows. And um, what's interesting there is 41% of the, of the, of the calf houses had zero percent outlet area, so that's no outlet at all. So there comes in where does it go? Um, which is going to lead to a buildup of airborne bacteria. Um, fifty five percent of the calf houses had poor distribution of inlets. Um, and I'll show you here in this picture. In the next picture, uh, sort of a few different scenarios. So this this shed here, um, and you can see the other side of it, but uh, had this sort of continual inlet run the whole way up the building. So all the calf pens had an equal dis uh, distribution of inlet. Um. Whereas in this, this top picture, you've got the far side of that is completely blocked off, where this side is very open. So it's, it's not from one side of the shed to another, it's not equal. And therefore, this side of the shed might not properly have the adequate air flow to remove the, um, the bacteria the way that it uh, should. Whereas this shed, you've got one side of the pen near shed side with the with next to the far side, um, not so much, and therefore more of a risk area. So you might have a, a shed that you might use four pens. One one pen might be the by the be the issue. Um, looking at uh, very briefly wind speed. So uh, you remember if you're in the project, you'll remember that thing something in your farm too weeks get in your way. Um, so there's an average. Uh, in terms of what the readings come from it, uh, the average rating across the, uh, across all farms was zero point zero four. So very very low. Um, often it's not not below as you can see. Uh, percentage of time at zero. Um, meters per second was ninety four. Um. Uh, ninety four percent, yeah, ninety four percent of the time was that I was at zero uh, meters per second, whereas zero point zero seven percent of the time was above uh, two meters per second, which is what's classified as a draft. Um, so very little. So in general, air flow was quite low in these houses. Uh, finally, then looking at sort of at labor in terms of in terms of the, uh, the time for feeding etc. Eighty two minutes was the average time spent per day feeding calves. Twenty seven minutes uh, in feeding the calf out and 20 minutes and other calf rearing duties uh, and changes have been made to the rearing system uh, 48 percent or i think it was 76 percent uh, had made a change in the last three years uh, 48 percent of those had made changes in housing and design management uh, 34 percent in feeding equipment and uh, management so feeding more feeding different products feeding um with different teeth feeders etc and then hygiene management which is very low um 23 percent and I really like management being uh, classroom and how they're feeding classroom and how much classroom. Heat insulation, 8% had made a change, which is the uh, addition of jackets or uh, heat lamps. So that's a very quick snapshot uh, of, of what's been seen. The next, uh, and I'd like to thank, sorry, I thank the farmers to, who were involved in that project for, for their uh, cooperation in all, in all matters of it. Uh, the next project that we're looking to run is, uh, which will be from September to over this common winter time. Is an intervention study which will look at changes made made to management and to housing design, and um, this will this is for will be including thirty farms. Um, so the, the the design changes that will be made will be very much specific, specific to that farm. And um, so you'll remember your report came with several um design changes and and uh, what percentage of outlet and what not was was met. So these these changes to design to design will be very much specific to your farm. Um. And then changes to uh, management and design of certain pens, which will mean that say fifty percent are being changed, fifty percent get the same, so that we can monitor the difference uh, in hygiene and moisture, uh, and then on calf performance. Um, and this time we'll be expecting farmers to keep uh, to keep records to allow us to sort of have an accurate representation of what's going on over that whole time. And then AFP will be sort of will be tracking that, so we'll be on a regular basis uh, coming out to the farm to make take measurements. Um, and we'll be making in the coming weeks. We'll be making contact uh, with farmers for involvement in that uh, study. So 
yeah, finally, yeah, once again, thanks to all the farmers who participated. Um, you're very good fun. Thank you very much, Aaron. Thank you.